Now we'll talk about the water. Today, I don't think there's any pure water anywhere. Okay, because of the levels of pollution, besides the radiation from Fukushima and so forth. So, so the key is, how do we go about preparing our water? Uh, there are different systems. We personally use uh, distilled water, and but distilled water loses its energy because it's cooked. And so we have to wake it up. So in my book, Spiritual Nutrition, I have a whole chapter on it. But to get to the point, we, I like it to be about 50 parts per million. So I add a smidgen of uh, whole salt, salt that has 82 minerals. And that's been mined, doesn't come out of the ocean, which is contaminated. Anybody know what a smidgen is? Sixteenth of a teaspoon. I just want to see if you're paying attention. Sixteenth of a teaspoon, okay. So you put that in a gallon of water, you now are up to 50 parts per million. That's really healthy water. Now, I tend to want to energize it. There are different ways to do that. There's actual machines you can do it, put out a frequency that awaken it and uh, create kind of a... A, a way to hold the energy. And then I then take a wooden spoon and swirl it to the right, creating a vortex that brings energy in, and then to the left, creating a vortex. Then I bless it. Now that's the water we drink. The rest of the thing is our water is good. Our water is really good for large communities. You can do a lot. The, the distill is best, but it's limited to your, really, your family. There's only so much distilled water you're going to make. So RO is the second best, and it gets 99% of the pollution out. I mean, we have some big pollutants to worry about, fluoride in the water. They're still doing it in the United States. Most of the world doesn't do that. Um, we have radiation in the water. These are all things that we need to get out. So RO is good, but you gotta check the membrane because it can get can get a hole in the membrane. It can get uh, kind of contaminated. So you want to change it on the sooner side rather than the later side. So those are the keys with water. How much water should you have? I don't do it by glasses because, as you're going to hear in my lecture tomorrow, how to individualize your diet um, and just side question. Uh, did everybody get the little chart to fill out, fast, slow oxidizer? Okay, so we're going to make some more up. But the point is we're different constitutions. So if you're a cough is like an elephant, you probably need six glasses of water a day. But if you're vata, which is like a goat, you may need 10 glasses of water. So according to your constitution, if everything is right with your physiology, you should be urinating every two hours. That's a pretty good thing. I mean, that's obviously not true if you have a bladder or kidney problem. But urinating every two hours tells you you're pretty hydrated. If you're doing every three or four hours, you're not hydrated. Hydration is a key to longevity. With age, like kids are, I don't know, 70 to 90 percent hydrated as babies. And then at middle age, we're maybe 50%, uh, and then we, start, we're, we get to 40% or above 60, and that isn't good because nothing works well when we're dehydrated. So with age, we really do need to pay attention. Actually, I didn't really get on to that whole thing until um, I got more around 60, 65, something like that. It's like, oh, this water thing's important. Because with age, we tend to hold less water in our system. That means our brain shrinks a little bit. It means our muscles aren't working as well. So with age, really need to pay more attention to be fully hydrated. Then everything works right. The brain comes to its full size. 
the heart's working right, you have enough fluid, blood to carry the oxygen around, there's multiple things. So I want to just give a real emphasis to that, and that is definitely part of enduring radiant health. 